Yeah, like I wanted to talk about your breakthrough because like at age 16, obviously you made your debut, like doing your thing at Birmingham. 1990. <laughs> <laughs> you know those mares? I was thinking, <laughs> it's when I was 16, I was, t- I was in school in <laughs> South London. <laughs> I was trying to give you yeah, a flower, yeah, but yeah, you yeah. could have left that mail. Me yeah, and no, the people would be like, <laughs> <laughs> but I should yeah. have took that. Baby, <laughs> 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 you could have taken right, it, you know. <laughs> Hello listeners and welcome back to another episode of the Beautiful Game Podcast. Happy New Year to you all. I'm not sure when this comes out but I thought I should just put it out there as this is the first episode or the first recorded episode of the New Year. I'm with my right hand man Dej. What are you saying to me bro? I'm good my bro. Happy New Year. Happy what are you saying? You're good. You, bro. I'm good. I'm good. Obviously this year we're looking to work hard and we're trying to have a big 2023. We're delighted to announce we're joined in the studio with a special guest. But before I introduce that guest, let me just go through the usuals. Follow our TikTok at TBG Pod. Follow our Twitter at podcast underscore TBG. Our Instagram at pod underscore TBG. Like the video, leave a comment and please subscribe to the YouTube channel as that helps the channel grow and get bigger guests in the future. We're delighted to announce we're joined with Viv Solomon. Big up, big up. Fresh from Ukraine, so we <laughs> appreciate you traveling down. Obviously, like Christmas period, spending time with the fam. So, how's that been, bro? First of all, thank you for having me, man. Love and my Happy dad. New Year to you and your listeners. So, if, uh, and yeah, man, it's been good. It's been good to be back with my family. I was the last time I was in the UK was September. So mm. to be back to spend time with my family, see some friends. It's been good, man. So it's been proper good, just catching up. So what, what did you munch over Christmas? The J-Rice, the usuals, or yeah, what, what were you tucking into? I had everything, to be <laughs> fair, man. <laughs> my auntie cooked some good stuff, man. Really? My mum didn't really need to do the cooking that day, so it was good. And then, yeah, so it was good, man. And and how how do you family. feel being back, man? How does it feel? Does it feel different? Like It feels a bit different because, obviously... I'm not used to hearing a different language because I'm used to hearing Ukrainian every day. So obviously to be back is just like refreshing. So yeah, no, it's good, man. It's good. It's good to be back. See the red buses again. See the family, you know what I mean? So it's good to be back. So yeah. Yeah, Yes, as we mentioned, obviously you're playing in Ukraine right now. Um, You're doing your thing. How has that been? How's that experience, man? Because a lot of players, they go to like mainland Europe, mm-hmm. like your Germany, your France, Italy, etc. So like playing you in Ukraine, how's that been? Um, it's been a different experience, man. Like it was, do you know what it was? Where I was mentally at the time where I went, there was no time to kind of process everything. Mm. I was, it was literally just, this is get back time. So I kind of just had to shift my mind to like, yeah, okay, cool. Like, I just have to get on with it. I have to try, I have to integrate. And then, yeah, so so far everything's gone well off the pitch. So it's allowed me to be settled on. So I'm just relaxed, chilling every day. I've got everything that I need around me when I'm away from training. So it just allows me to relax. And then I go on the pitch. And then when you've got like a manager that likes you and trusts mm-hmm. you, it makes it even better. And then you've got teammates that also respect you, rate you as well. It makes it so much easier. So once you get comfortable, you just try things and then once the things that you try work mm. then you want to do more things so yeah no man it's been it's been good so far so obviously before you went to ukraine what sort of headspace would you say you were in um i was in a weird headspace because i'd just come back from a long-term injury and um i was kind of like getting back or trying to get myself back to where i was six months before so i was in a space where a bit of depression a little bit because it was it's like you're somewhere six to twelve months ago flying mm. and then you get an injury and then it's like everyone's questioning are you that player mm. so it's very confusing 
and then you start to question yourself, are you going to be that player again? But my situation is a bit different because I was playing with a bad injury and I was still that player. Yeah. So now that I'm back fit, why is there question marks? Do you know what I mean? Mm. So, so in terms of like that period, obviously, when you were having depression, like were clubs offering for you and stuff like that? So or? when, so obviously I, when I, um, I went to, I forgot what it's called, but St. George's Park, they do some, they obviously with the PFA, there's like some, I can't remember what they're called, sorry, but they're a good team. Mm. They like get you people back fit. And well, like, is it a sporting chance clinic yeah, or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'd done my um, rehab at Wigan the whole time. So then the, the physio was like, listen, for the last week, we're going to send you here. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, cool. Different, different environment, different people, just meet new people and just get back to getting fit. So I was there for like five days or four days. And we did that. Got and um, was training every day, like um, with the trainer. And then I, on the first day I got ticked off. Then I remember I was in London and I was like, you know, let me just call um, Mick McCarthy because he wanted me before mm. to go to Cyprus. And uh, we had talks before, but he couldn't do nothing. So I was like, you know, I've, um, obviously I'm not going to stay at Wigan. So I was like, let me call Mick. So I've called him. I said, yeah, I got ticked off. I'm fit. He's like, yeah, come, come in on Monday. I'd like to have a look at you. I'll, I want to see where you're at. Came in and then just the first session was good. Second session, yeah, felt very good. So I was like, okay, cool. So you know, it's like all those doubts that were in your head, mm. they kind of washed away because it's like, nah, man, I'm still that person. Whereas I, I'm always going to be that person, but if you start to keep, yeah. when you start keep hearing things, you it's kind of like, you start to believe it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Not that believe it, but it just keeps, like, yeah. it's, it's a noise, it's a noise. Yeah, yeah, it's isn't a it? noise. So mm. then, no, nah, everything was fine. Plus, it was a step up, it was championship, just mm. championship players, good players, to be fair. So yeah, no, it was just fine. I just played how I played and he was like, yeah, no, we really like you, we want to sign you. But obviously, due to circumstances of him losing his job at the time, obviously nothing can go ahead, which is understandable, that's football. So I went back to to London for a bit, spent some time with my family and then um, speaking to people, speaking to people. And then I think I went to, I went to train with Bolton oh, yeah. for a couple of days. Then whilst I was training with Bolton, um, I think it was Paul Robinson. He used to play, I used to play, he was a ex senior player at Birmingham. Fullback. Yeah, and yeah, he yeah, was a yeah. senior player. Yeah. So he's friends with the St Johnston manager. Callum so, Davidson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they needed. They had so much injury. So like, uh, come in for like a month and just play with us. And before that, I already knew about Ukraine. <laughs> so I knew that this team wanted me. But I was like, you know, let me just go there for a month, play some games and then see and then after that I'll come straight to Ukraine. So I literally I did that and then when the month ended I came back for came back for like a, a week break and then I went to Ukraine. Because mm, I remember there was that game St. Johnson versus Celtic it was yeah. on Sky this was that back end of 2021 yeah. and you done an assist didn't you yeah, crossed yeah, yeah, it yeah. and kind of thing so yeah I remember that period. So that too. was like me just getting back to like just trying to find my feet again, get my rhythm again in games and stuff like that. So yeah, and no, I was good to get an assist. So yeah, I was just like. What so did you have an option to extend that St Johnson or that was I more like both longer, parties like you're helping yeah, each other? Like I need to get to, fit. Really. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's just one of those. I think. Not that I didn't want to, but I just wanted. To, I just wanted to. I just wanted to leave the country. I was done mentally because mm. of certain things. So I thought, you know, let me just go away again, like I did, what two years before. Mm. So like, I just want to like go back to like the mental challenges that you were talking about earlier in terms of like the headspace because I actually on Belogan a similar thing when he came onto the platform. So like what if you had to like take us through a day like that during the peak of the injury where you're doubting yourself, what 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 happens? So you wake up, is it to the gym? Do you want to speak to friends, family? What what do you do? Do you want to know like that straight after the operation or like at coming back or? What do you want to know, like, in, during the, the rehab the process? the period, yeah. because it's interesting. I think the rehab. a lot of players, like, reach out to us and they say, oh, this mm. episode helped me. Like, mm. I was going through something, like, especially, like, the Charlie Masunda and yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yannick Belassi, because Yannick had, like, the a knee, issue. knee injury. Yeah, so Charlie Masunda's been recovering. So, yeah, players yeah, have yeah. reached out and said, oh, like, so, like, just to give you yeah. yeah. So, um, I'd say mine was a, it was, a, it was a unique experience because I think, I had an ankle injury first, 
and I've never had operation. I never thought I'd ever have operation. So obviously that was tough in itself, but I got back from that. So I was okay, I was good, I was bubbly again. And then with March, um, the doctor said, the physio was like, um, this type of injury could be nine months, but let's go see the specialist. So from that moment, it's in your head. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I was thinking, oh my God, like I just come back from an injury. Like what the hell? Never ever been injured. injured. So then um, we went to see the surgeon. He said, no, it'd be like three to four weeks. But you can play five games. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll play the five games. And then after five games, I'll stop. So obviously Wigan was in a situation where we were struggling and they needed kind of the best. So I was like, you know, I'll, I'll play. Like, I'll, um, I'll... Soldier through, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I'll, do you know what I mean? Like, let's try to stay up. They're like, yeah, don't worry. Play. You have new owners. It's fine. Rather, when the new eyes come in, like, we'll sort you out kind of thing. So then... Um, I was getting my knee injected to play. So my knee will swell up. Inject my knee. Swelling will go. I'll be able to last... Still play well, play well, and then it was just two, three days later, I would just get be like swollen again. So that that in itself for like two, three months, even when I'm walking on a normal day, it's a bit of a, a limp. So after I had the operation, and when it was like time for rehab time, like waking up in the morning, it was just difficult. Even like through through the playing process, whilst being injured, game ready in five, six times a day, I like ice in my knee, and then having to like inject my knee before the game take, and then play through the pain. Remember there was one time I was in the bot toilet. I was just thinking, like, how am I going to do this? And bro, I don't know how, then I'll just like somehow switch my mind and I'll play. But then agony after. So then going through like the, um, when I had the operation and going through like the the phys- rehab phase, like it was difficult, man. Especially seeing, you're seeing everyone outside, mm. running, training. And you're inside in the gym, you've got to do like 15, 15 reps of leg extensions, like three, four times. Pain, like it was, it was, it was difficult, man. It was tough. And then like, I had my family there, but I didn't really want to speak to no one. I didn't speak to no one. Like, mm. I would, my friends would ask me to do things. I'd be like, no, I'm okay. I just went missing. Mm. Yeah. That was, yeah, I just went missing, man. Like there was a phase where like I would, I don't know, I'd want to go out. But then it's like, what's the point? Because you go out, and it's like, what are you celebrating for? Do you know what I mean? Because when you wake up on Monday, or when you wake up the next day, you still got, your, your knee's still in that situation. Do you know what I mean? So there was no point, so I stopped doing that. And I just went missing, bro. I just didn't speak to no one. So, like, who were the people that helped you, like, get back on a path to, like, recovery? Because, yeah, that's brutal. And that's a side that foot, like, football fans don't see, mm. you know. Football is getting long-term injuries. Yeah, yeah, you just yeah. see them on Sky Sports playing football. You see nine months out. That's it. You're on to the next team, etc. But how was it? Like, uh, like the, the, the Wigan physios were very good. They obviously, they helped me because I did my rehab there. They were very good. And then, like, obviously, my mum and dad, it wasn't nice for them to see because they never saw me like that. Mm. Obviously, when I'd come back to London and see them and stuff, and then like some of my close friends, but like even just, just like I don't know, like just going through that phase, that was like the first part, and then when I got back fit again, and then all these other things started happening. That's when it was just like, this is crazy. Like that's when I just I was just like, no, like this is mad. But I guess everything happens for a reason, man. Mm. That's how I see it. But it's not something that I wish upon anyone I would like to see anyone go through because it's not nice especially like when you make because my case was they said it was supposed to be four weeks so after the fourth week there's things that I'm doing I'm supposed to do that I still can't do so I'm going to see the specialist again she's like no you're not ready and it's like okay cool but then what I found out was because of me playing on it at the time it just made it worse so isn't that isn't that negligence from the club or is it you saying, you know, I want to soldier through, I want to make I myself I said I was soldier through as mm. well, but I did not think it'd get to that point. Do you understand? Mm. So then, obviously, once, when we stayed up, they're like, oh, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> when the whistle went, they're like, yeah, you're done. Yeah. Like, you're done. And then, yeah, man, and then just things happened. Obviously, I continued to do my rehab there, knowing was, I wasn't going to stay. And then yeah, I man, there was just some political things. So happened. so knowing you weren't gonna stay, why weren't you gonna stay? Because they offered me 
just a, a contract that's just basically just that basically they offered you a contract but it, it was a contract that's like okay we're just going to put something there for the sake of putting something there do you understand but it yeah. wasn't do you know what I mean whereas so it's like okay cool you're, you're putting that in my face but then I had other clubs who offered me very good packages and um, how can I explain yeah so they offered me decent good contracts mm-hmm. to come and I'm in the same predicament here you lot know me you see me every day and you put that you put that in my face so that was basically, it was quite evident you don't want me. So it's like doing. a tokenistic gesture, yeah, like yeah, yeah, we so don't really want. You. If he takes it, oh, happy days. If not, we don't. But there was no point taking it because. What did you dis- It would have never been in my favor. Did you discuss that with them? Like, what's there was ne- there was never time to discuss. Cause my agency at the time when they'd call, no one would really answer. So it was like, okay, cool. They're not answering. Let's let's find the next solution. But because I'd done well, luckily I still had some some decent offers. But then when I'd go for the medical, I'd fail. So I'd failed a medical at Charlton. But, and so, uh, yeah, I failed a medical at Charlton. And yeah, and then I had to go back to Wigan to finish my rehab. So imagine doing, your, especially imagine doing your rehab somewhere where you're not wanted as well. So I have to go in every day with the physio team who are fantastic. Mm-hmm. But the club. But the club don't want you. Yeah, and so then there's, they say, oh, because of your injury. But then there's players who you signed Let's say my injury was a four out of ten. Their injury is a seven out of ten, and they've signed. That's they're that's signed. what I don't get though. Like, how do you fail a med? Like, because like you see injured players move, so like yeah. If the club but, really want you, no, but then it is. Mm. Yeah, if the club really want you, though, they can find some loopholes. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. so it was just like, so I'm going into this building environment every day. Mm. I have to do my rehab, and I have to see what's going on. But somehow get my head around the fact that okay, cool. I need to do what I need to do, so that I can get to the back to being what I was. Do you know what I mean before mm. this injury? So that in itself was the like that in itself hurt because I gave myself, I gave everything. Mm. Do you understand? And playing injured, yeah, yeah. yeah. I gave everything, me. thinking that I was going to be repaid. But in the January window, um, Charlton wanted to sign me. But I said, you know what, no, thank you very much. I'm going to stay. I'm going to help this team um, stay up. Like, I gave my word. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but football, the more you see it and the more you understand from players and stuff, you got to look after number one. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. got to look after number one. And like this is what people don't understand. And this is what I was getting abused by Wigan fans. Oh, he doesn't want to be here. He doesn't want to be here. Like, I walk into Asda. Why haven't I mean, you signed? It's not me. I would love to sign, but mm. let's be trying, you know what I mean? So, like, let's put into context. Obviously, you had your deal at Wigan. So, yeah. the new contract, was it half of what you were originally on, a quarter of, like, what What ballpark? It's, bro, like I said, the contract was basically <laughs> the same. <laughs> we're going to put something there. Yeah. But it was we're just going to put something there. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not big-headed or anything like that, but I was playing in... They would in Europe, they'll be like, oh, Bulgaria, da, 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 da. But I was playing in a top league, and I was playing for a team we play Europa League, the qualifier for Europa League or the Conference League, pretty much every season. On a fantastic contract. But I I took the hit to leave because of the situation that happened. But I said, okay, cool, you know what? I'll help. I'll play. No worries, it's fine. So I wasn't going to. I just couldn't take that, man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, especially when. Other teams often like way, way, way more than that. But I think that's just part and parcel of the game, man. Yeah, man. It was one of those. It was crazy, man. It was. A, it, was it wasn't a nice experience, like. But I just have to soldier through, man. Because at the end of the day, it's me and me only that's gonna get myself back to where I need to be. That's it. Mm. So whether I have to just firm it, like look down, just do what I need to do. So look down and do what I need to do. Yeah, man. So yeah, just one of those. Yeah. So, how would you say like that experience shaped you? Because obviously it's been a bit negative, but mm-hmm. there must be a positive that's come out of all the setbacks that you've had. So sitting here today, you know, Jan twenty twenty three with Solomon, what has that done for you? That sort of experience it just made me so much mentally stronger, man. Like, just to the point where it's like, okay, cool. No matter what, I just got to soldier through it. I've, 
like, and it just, like, I got, I was always close to God, but it made me even more closer to God. Yeah. And I was just praying more every day. And maybe God said, I don't want you there. Maybe I have to, you have to go through these things so that when you come out of this, you'll be able to see better. You'll be able to anticipate situations better. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I think everything happens for a reason, but it definitely made me mentally stronger and just more understanding of life, really. Uh, yeah, that's how I'd put it. Cool. And that, so, yeah, let's talk about the hair and now. Obviously, you're playing in Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. You're doing your thing. You're enjoying your football now. You're playing regularly. I see the posts on Insta. Yeah, um, you know, like kind of <laughs> you're doing a one-two skill, skill. <laughs> doing the <Just> chop, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really man. enjoying yourself out there. So, like, yeah, let's talk about your your new team in Ukraine. Like, yeah. how, how is it? Like, how has it been settling in? I know you've got like other Nigerians playing there as well. Like, there's two. Yeah. I think Bright's there as well. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. other few players. So, how how's that been, man? No, it's been good. Obviously, I went before the war, and the war happened, so there was a break for like six months, which was tough. Yeah. as well because I didn't do nothing for another six months so it was just like ugh. that one itself was crazy but then we got through it came back for pre-season got on a nice welcome back and yeah man it was just time to work um, team's good we've got really good young players we are all internationals for Ukraine um, we got good players obviously um, from I think Brazil we've got good young Ukrainian boys who were established there and uh, our, um, our captain, goalkeeper captain, he's an experienced Ukraine player. I played the national team for them for many years. So it's good, man. I've got a good manager, good setup. And like, it's just a, it's a one family club, really. And the club, like, I'd say in five years, they'll be like. They'll okay, be, yeah. Yeah, they will mm-hmm. be top of one of the top, top teams in Ukraine. But especially with the young players that they have as well, got very good young players, and it's a very good setup. So it's a good place to be, and especially with the the complex resort that we have, it just allows you to to be focused. And it's like you have no excuse because you've got everything in your face. Mm-hmm. So it's like if you if you choose, how can I put it? You got everything in your face, so you just got to make the most of it. There's no time to slack. So there's no excuse really when everything's in front of you. So it's a privilege. Yeah. It's a privilege, yeah. So how is it like culturally as well? Because in the UK, there's, you know, a particular culture or whatever. And yeah. Ukraine, have you noticed any like differences with the way people interact? Like maybe people want to help more or? How? Yeah, yeah. My, um, obviously, because I'm, so, I'm in a resort like all the time. I don't oh, really yeah. leave the resort. So from what I see, everyone's like understanding. They help me kind of learn a little bit. But. Any words you wanna tell us? But yeah, no, just like small little words that I'm, just, yeah. I'm kind of like picked up on, like just hello, how are you, good morning, mm. like stuff like that. How's your day? And um, yeah, man, everything's fine. Like the nice people, just just get on with it. Literally, everyone's nice. Say hello to everyone in the morning. Respect. Yeah, man, that's it. And where would you say your games at at the moment? I'd say. Like, from when I got back, every day, I just got better and better and better and better. So, like, I'd say, because obviously, because I'd just come back from the injury as well. So, it was like, you're kind of finding your rhythm again. You're finding your rhythm again. And then just game by game, just got trained session by session. Just got better and better and better. And then I got more comfortable. So, then I was allowed, then I allowed myself to take myself back to where I was mentally, where I'm able to just be myself and play how I play football. So I'd say I'm nearly there. Mm. So I'm nearly there. I say there's more, there's so much more, but I'm nearly there. So in terms of like goals for the season, for you in particular, like what's your, your goals My and goals. what's the teams as well? Our team, our goal was to be top five because it's a very, um, it's a very, how can I put it? It's the best time to be able to break into top five now this season especially so that's our goals my personal goals why is it the best time because of the war situation yeah so teams are still strong but they're not going to be as strong so like do you know what I mean so it's mm. just like okay cool we have a chance of breaking do you know what I mean breaking in and we've got good we've got good young players who are capable of doing it and we've got a good team so we're capable now of doing it with the team we have um, my goals are 
continue to first and foremost be the best I can be contribute more to the team score more goals get more assists and then hopefully use that use my team as a platform to, to obviously try and do I mean take myself to the next level or next step shall I say yeah because I was looking at some statistics the other day and you're like one of the top three wingers in the Ukrainian league for like take-ons beating a man and stuff like that and there's another player there that a lot of people are going to be hearing about Modric yeah, yeah. who's at um, Shakhtar <laughs> Donetsk as well so like surely being in amongst that mix for a winger that obviously shows you're doing your thing as well yeah no man for me that's very big because like I said these guys they play for top teams mm. they play Champions League football on a Wednesday night Tuesday night and obviously plays for a very good team who are very good at keeping the ball and they're always on the attack my team we're very good but I'd say we still got more understanding like in terms of like young players they still need to understand a bit more more experience once they get more experience then they'll, their mind will just get it straight away just seeing out games a bit better but other than that yeah so they're like top four we're like top ten right now yeah. but we can still break top six because of the gap it's not yeah. that big so for them to do that where they are and then I'm with my team doing what I'm doing and still able to beat everybody else because there's not only three wingers in the league, there's wingers yeah. in every team, especially the ones in the top teams. So for me to be able to kind of get that statistic shows that I'm doing something right. Mm, so what's shows, your... No, nah, go on, sorry, bro. And shows that my team's doing something so, right because yeah. if it wasn't for my team, I wouldn't be able to be on the ball getting to... Do be course. able to do my thing a lot, so it's a win for everybody, really. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It shows that we're coming along, so it's good. Mm, no, I was gonna ask you that. What's your take on Modric? Because obviously he's heavily linked with Arsenal and Chelsea at the moment, and like a lot of people, when you read like social media and journalist pieces, they're saying he's gonna be the difference between Arsenal potentially, you know, missing out on the title mm. and literally going on a title charge. So when you came up against him, what? Did he did he catch your eye? Obviously, he got sent off within like twenty minutes. But <laughs> you yeah. can see the player. You know from a player's attribute that they're mm. a very good player. You can see the characteristics. So like speed, agility. Pre-game was there like some sort of like analysis. Yeah, or? every game, every any team we play against, we always do analysis on on anyone. It could be the team of the last or the team first. We'll always anal analyze every team. So obviously, you analyze their key players as well. And he obviously he's one. And you'd see like some clips against Roma. Uh, I don't know. I think there was another one against Ajax where he scores goals where he's running from like his own half. <laughs> and then, do you know what I mean? So yeah, he's mocking it. Yeah, you know that he's a good player, and yeah. it shows the level of players that Ukraine produce mm -hmm. as well, and that the league is very good. And to young players who are from here, there's more to life than trying to make it as a footballer here. You can go abroad and still establish yourself, establish yourself, and have a good career. So. For for Arsenal or Chelsea to cash in like what they want to cash in on a player like that, yeah, because they're shows, talking big P, yeah, like exactly. what sixty to eighty million pounds. Right. That's a, yeah, so it shows what Ukraine are doing with their young players, how they're developing their football. So it's a very good look for the country, which is good. Yeah, because even like I know you both sort of share facility in Ukraine, and it's one of the best in in Europe. So like coming up close and personal with him, like how would you say he operates in terms of? I don't know, looking after himself, his gym work. Mm. Like, what sort of mentality do you see? Obviously, someone that wants to be the best and get to the next level. You'll always see it with um, hungry players, especially when they're young, even older. They'll do the extra work and they'll put in the extra. So, obviously, you'll see, not just him, you'll see a lot of them in the gym doing extra work. And, obviously, that's the difference between someone who wants to get to make their goals become a reality. So, yeah, no. So you see the difference between you see the difference between him, and obviously I'm not to say that no one else is putting in extras, but to get to the next level, you gotta put in your extras, mm -hmm. so that when you get on the pitch, your characteristics will show your speed, your agility, your strength. And obviously, he's putting in the work as so well as you, others. Yeah, so are you sort of sitting there thinking, you know what, he's being linked for like X amount, blah blah. There's hope for me that listen, I can play at the top level. Like we're no. doing similar numbers. Is it like motivation or? Hundred percent. You know, all it is is like you. Everyone, like even as I'm sitting here talking to you, we all have to believe in ourselves. We all got to believe, listen, I can be the next best at whatever field I'm in. Mm. So yeah, of course it's motivational. And for me, it's like, 
that must mean I'm doing something right, especially what, what has happened in the last 12 months. So I know I can get there. It's just timing and it's um, being able to be continue to stay fit and focused. So yeah, no, it's very motivational. Yeah, you were saying that obviously you want to not use this team as a platform to go into bigger and better things, but obviously that's your aspiration. Like what sort of level do you kind of see yourself playing at in terms of the um, progression? Um, I don't like obviously the league that I'm playing in it's a very good league because we have top teams in the league from 1 to 5 1 yeah. to 5 they, if you if you win the league you go automatically to Champions League you don't have to go through group stages and stuff so like maybe I don't know if you, you never know with football or yeah. my team is even good enough to break into that mm. and we can make our own history so you never know what happens in life but yeah obviously I'd like to obviously the aspiration is always to play in Europe man like in terms of like Europa League or like a Champions League that's always everyone's goal so if I'm in a situation where I'm able to do that then I'll fight for it as much as I can really so yeah somewhere just continue to play top football in Europe or here in England or yeah so yeah because even in terms of like the doctor where you're not yeah so in terms of the war like obviously that took everyone by surprise yeah, and yeah. we were seeing the images on the news Obviously, we don't want to talk too much about it because it's obviously yeah. it's a bit political and stuff like that. But how is it being in Ukraine from a foreign land, just witnessing what's going on? Because um, in my head, like when I think, what well, I think, tankers, no, guns, no, no, no. everything, just a whole whole no, madness. No, nothing like that. It's not okay. like a madness like that. Obviously, they cut their electricity once, but which was a shock. But other than that, no, everything's been fine. Especially where we are, it's safe. So life is normal, especially when I went back. Like you, like what you thought. For, oh no, life is just normal. <laughs> yeah. Like how you see how I met you here. It's the same thing. Life is normal. Everyone just getting about their business and just living life as if it, there was no war going on. So yeah. Because yeah. mm, also, like I remember there was sort of this loophole being spoken about that. Um, I think players from like foreign land they can maybe try and find a new club yeah, yeah, yeah. or something like that was that ever something that was like yeah, a possibility yeah, yeah. for you that was a possibility for me but then the manager wanted me to come back but it was a possibility but were like you I exploring it so like which I was exploring but it was like if it doesn't really make sense then what's the point then it was just like like I said to you what I'd been through 6 to 12 months ago was like my mind is just my mindset was just different. So I was like, okay, cool. If I've got to do what I've got to do here, even though there's still this situation, I just got to do it. And that's what my head was at. And I was just like, you know, let me just go, go elsewhere, focus, get my mind right, and just focus on football and only football. So were teams like approaching you or? Yeah, I had like to go to like Norway and stuff like that okay. when the war happened, but I just didn't think that was for me at that time. So yeah. So in terms of the future, would you like returning to England be of interest or? It just depends where mm. and who is from and who's who's in the setup. Yeah, because I've seen not everybody's the same. One they'll say one thing to you and then something else happens. So it it depends. But yeah, I'd always be open to coming back, one hundred percent. But it depends. It just has to be right for both of both parties, really. Yeah, like I wanted to talk about your breakthrough because like. At age 16, obviously, you made your debut, like, doing your thing at Birmingham. 19, 19. <laughs> <laughs> you know those men? I was thinking, <laughs> it's when I was 16, I was, I was in school in <laughs> South London. <laughs> I was trying to give you yeah, a flag, yeah, but yeah, okay, yeah. you could have left that mail on me. Yeah, and then people would be like... <laughs> But I should yeah. have took that. Fim, <laughs> 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 you could have taken it, you know. Let's Google you could have just looked down. It does. Sometimes it does. It does. It does. It does. It does. Yeah, Wikipedia. Yeah, Wikipedia. Like, yeah, you were yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, sitting next to me in, in science. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like what I was gonna say is that obviously you broke through at like, Birmingham. You're yeah. doing your thing. You and Damari Gray. There was that go against Fulham. Yeah, yeah. When you just ran from your halfway line. So talk to us about your come up, man. You were making noise. My come up was. I always had to prove myself. Again, it was never easy for me. Like when I was in the youth team, uh, we was in the youth team, uh, Kobe Arthur, he's 17, he broke through first. So we're looking, we're thinking, bro, I'm like, okay, cool. It's touch and distance. I see Kobe every day. Then he's made his debut. He's playing in the championship with, seven, with first year squatters. 
it's not even pro time yet. Like, you know, where they give you your decisions for pros, that happens like in the year after. Yeah, so, so we're like not 15, even able, 16. 16, yeah. 17, we're not even at that stage yet. Then um, we come back for pre season again. Then Reese Brown, he's he's playing in the championship <laughs> now. Yeah. He's 17. Mm. Then yeah. Damari Gray, 17. So, so I'm looking at thinking, oh, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there's time. Mm. But like I said, I always had to prove myself. Why? I don't know, man. That's just how it's always been for me. Even when I was in, at um, academies, bro. Mm. I started off at Crystal Palace. I was the best player in my age. But I didn't get a scholarship. So who's your age group at the time? Uh, Hiram Boateng. Oh, Riz yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Mm. I think the only one that's pro... It's Hiram, plays on okay. mm. That was it. He was good as well. So, one of the best of my ages, but so you always have to prove yourself and there was always something. So what would they say? What would be the excuse that like, we're not giving you a deal because there of was no, it? Like, when I didn't get my scholarship, there was no, we're not giving you a deal because of this. So it's just... We're not giving you. And then I signed for Birmingham two weeks later. <laughs> so you yeah. must have ripped that up. You must have took yeah. that frustration I, into I that trial and batted it up. I wasn't even, I think I was, I can't remember. I went to an exit trial. Oh, yeah, like yeah, a showcase. Showcase like, game. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I've done well in the game. And mm. I had like, so I went to Derby for one week. People in my school thought I got expelled. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't see me. I was like, no. Ghost. I'm, yeah, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm <laughs> my future right now. I'm trying yeah. to fight for my future. Mm. I came back. Then when I was in Derby, in the digs, that's when Birmingham called me to come. So then I went to Birmingham. I played a match against Chan. I didn't know no one's name. Just came to the change room, played two assists, boom, 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 signed. Then, yeah, so then I moved to Birmingham and that was hard in itself because I was like 16, I was away from London. All I knew was London, mm -hmm. being around my friends, do you know what I mean? So like that, it was just different. And then, yeah, man, I just had to like, I had always had the talent mm -hmm. and everything, but I was just like, they wanted to see more and more and more or like that someone would sign they would try to sign someone would sign in my position it's like okay cool I've got to show you I'm better than him then I'll do that or like there would there was like we had like one manager in under 21s when we all got our pros it wasn't really nice so then but then he left and then the, and the, the, the other under 21s coach came back and he always had kind of, he always believed in me so like, let's say I'm in a youth team and I didn't play a youth team game. The Sunday I'll be training with under 21s, okay. like things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they still believed in me. But I, I, it was just I don't know when you I don't know. It's just I don't know. I can't put it into words. So when we um, when I got to my first year of pro, I was just doing well, just done well, consistent, consistent, consistent. And then I went to Nigeria trials under 23s. I got in, came back from preseason, bro. I was flying. Yeah, I was running past everyone. Everyone was like, "Right, yeah, you definitely got that Nigerian training." And, yeah, and then the manager was like, "Look, no, we played eleven v eleven. This is how I got into the first team. We played eleven v eleven against the first team, and I done very well. I was just ripping the fullback, <laughs> I was ripping him, I was ripping him." <laughs> and then the manager called me to the office. But when you're young, you don't really get called to the manager's office. I was thinking, I'm just, I'm just trying to think, what have I done? I'm trying to kick the ball I'm in like, trouble again. Yeah, yeah, kind of thing like this. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Did he see me on my phone in the corridor? Like, what yeah. have I done? He goes, I'm going to use you. Be patient. I'm thinking, what? What, me? Because when you're when you're in that under-21s, even though the first team's there, it's still far, bro. Because yeah. there's like five, six guys in your position. So you're thinking, what, me? Why am I going to send you on loan when you do what opposition does to our players. And I've got you here. Why am I going to send you a loan? Because I had two loan offers at the time. Little didn't, um, and then a week later, I got a squad number out of nowhere. They're like, oh, come, the kit man was like, come to the kit room. Mm. I was like, for what? He goes, you got a squad number. <laughs> I'm like, get out of here, man. I just walked out. He yeah. goes, no, be serious. The manager said, pick. So, so what numbers were there? I picked like? 17, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, you remember that? Yeah, was yeah, there any other one? I bet he started yeah, into that. Like 30, <laughs> yeah, like 41. Yeah. 17 was there. I picked 17. So I was like, bro, I called my mum and dad. I was like, mum, I got a squad number. Mm -hmm. Then we had a match on the Monday for the under-21s, playing in the train on the Saturday. So the managers read out the squad, but I'm not involved. Cool. I'm thinking, mm -hmm. what have I done? Next pitch, we've got to run. The ones who are not playing. So I'm doing the running. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, raw. I even done nothing. Like what? Then 
the first team had a game on a Friday night, so we had to go to the game. So I saw the academy manager, I was like, I'm not in the squad and I had to run. He goes, you never know of it, but I'm not... Processing you know I mean? you're just thinking, oh, they you're training on Monday. Yeah. Then I clocked, oh, the only people that are really be training on Monday is the ones that are not going to this game and the first team. But I'm thinking, right, I ain't put a foot wrong. So hopefully it's the first team. Now yeah. you're with the first team. Train, get back in, bro. I see my name on the lift of the squad. I was like, yeah. oh my God. And then, yeah, made my debut against Gillingham in the league Carl- Carabao Cup. Yeah, Carlin Cup, Carlin probably. Cup. The, yeah, 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 yeah. And then that's when it started, man. Wow. Literally, that's how it started. It was, I didn't expect it to be like that, but it happened, man. Mm, so the manager was what? Gary Rowett? Yeah. Because I saw some like yeah, quotes yeah. of him talking that, like, sort of comparing you and Damari Gray, saying, yeah. oh, I think quicker than him or something. Yeah, you he, both can. Dimmy's more jelly skill mm. and stuff like that. You're more. He's very good. You're more. Nine. Nine. <laughs> pound the jam. The pound the jam. Nine. Power. Yeah, he's a yeah, yeah, player. He's a player. He's a player. Top, top, top. So, yeah. So, they'll always try and compare us, but it was always different. Mm. So, yeah. No, man. And then that's how, that's how I got through. And then, yeah, I scored that goal against Fulham. Yeah, that was, was crazy. mad. Inside your own arm. Yeah, just yeah, running. Man. Chopped the defender. Bottom corner. I couldn't feel couldn't film, I couldn't even speak, bro. I had no, I was. Yeah, like, like, I saw your face after the goal. Yeah, like, I was like, bro, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. And then, yeah, that's, everything just went, it was that's going a, up from there. It was it's good. Actually, it's actually mad because like, you were saying you left school for a week, like to go up to Birmingham. So were your parents supportive? Because, yeah, come yeah. on, like, we I all know. come from a Nige background. That's yeah. unheard of. Like, yeah. missing school for a week. So My parents were very supportive that's, that's from the it. beginning. Like, mm. um, why when why, I was why a do you kid, think that was, though? Because my dad used to play back in Nigeria. Oh, yeah. So my grandma was like, listen, if whatever he wants, let him chase and follow. Oh, and then that. when my family, my dad noticed, and my mum noticed, okay, cool, he's good. They're well, going to support you all the way. But they support me even when I was like six or seven. Like my mum's people will be like to mum, why are you even taking them? No, I have to. No, it's my son. Do you know what I mean? Like you have to support your kids and what they want to do. Of course, education is important. Yeah. But trust me, if your son has a talent, just believe in him, man. And it, you, trust me, okay. he'll be able to like fulfill his potential or f- fulfill that talent and get make something of his life. Mm. But obviously, I still had to take school serious. But are you a good student? No, I was a good student, <laughs> yeah, man. I'd say yeah. from your from your seventy and nine, I was, <laughs> and then year nine, year ten, I just calmed down, man. I was just like, okay, cool, no, man. Let me allow the teachers now, give them a rest. <laughs> and then just no I wonder they thought you got always, expelled. <laughs> no wonder they thought you got expelled. I was always a good student. I was just cheeky, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was one of those do. students. Yeah. But always used to talk back, but good student as well. They yeah, liked yeah, me yeah. as well. Yeah. So I'd be like, oh, come on, man, I'm disappointed you didn't need to do that. Mm. Like, Sorry, miss me. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> then my call again. Yeah. But no, I was always always had respect for everyone. So, yeah, man. My parents, they always supported me, take me to training. My dad would drive from London to Birmingham Jeez. to watch me play every Saturday. Would drive me back to London for the weekend, for that one day I get home to spend time with my family and take me back. So, yeah, man. That's good. So, yeah, we spoke about, obviously, like, bursting onto the scene at Birmingham. So, like, what happened next? So, the next season, so I, b- I come through, was playing, I think I played 30, apparently made 30 appearances, made, got young player of the year that year, and then I signed a long-term deal, three and a half year deal. But I could have left, because I think I had like a year left, but I could have went, but I decided to stay. And then, I don't, bro, it was kind of like, well, we signed us, you sign us, sit back down. Uh, you get so like they use like yeah. a young player like listen he's got potential etc let's protect ourselves no so they, I signed a deal I played and then the next season I came back um, I would make I'd make appearance but I wouldn't and then I don't know I just didn't get as much game time as I thought I w- would have got and then I had loan offers but they're like no don't worry we're going to use you then I still want to play they'll be like don't just be patient you're young be patient you're young but then I there gets comes a time you just want to play, man. Yeah. You just want to play yeah. football, and you want to be. You know when you're young and you're not, you, you want to feel like you're a first team player. Like you're, even though you're there, you want to feel like okay, cool, I'm a professional. You want to be in them games where you want to you, three points is at stake. So then I went on loan to Bolton, and it was crazy because I was out of 
Bolton and Oxford United and both managers said the same thing <laughs> but I chose Bolton and I didn't play I played like four times mm. but I was like always, but I was just every day in training I was very good I'd always train well and then I remember when the loan ended the man, they tried to sign me because I always applied myself so good but the manager was like they sign, obviously I'm a winger but they'll play a different system they played 3-5-2 oh, yeah, so yeah, I didn't yeah. fit into the mm-hmm. system and then I went back to Birmingham and then I went I said you know I need to go on loan again so I went to Blackpool and I played like 47 games and I think I started 44 Jeez, yeah. so yeah man uh, that was that helped my development I went back to Birmingham again and then um, like I remember I went back and then I remember I was when I was like 19 I was always in the first team changing and everything and I've gone back and I was changing with like under 23s but I was a bit confused because the year before when I came back from my loan, I just went back into the change room. So it was like, from the beginning, it was like, oh, you, you got to prove yourself. Yeah. Do you get it? Like, yeah, remember yeah, I said, yeah, I'm always yeah, having yeah. to prove mm-hmm. myself. So why was that then? That I don't, I, I, I couldn't tell you. So honestly. then they tell you, Viv, you know no, what? No, uh, no, no. So no conversation? Like, no, just, oh, uh, you get changed there. So it's I was like, okay, it's cool. It's strange. It's almost like, like they kind of like used you as a pawn. So like sign a contract, then sit back down kind of thing. We're going to play you until you sign a contract. Then we're going to just put you back in there you to keep know, your value. I, I don't know, but I, honestly, I don't know. And then when I came back in two, after my loan at Blackpool, I had some interesting inquiries from some Premier League teams, some championship teams. Okay. So which teams were, were they I think it was, there was West Ham that was there. Derby County came in as well because Gary Wright was the manager. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, so he was always kind of looking to see what I was doing to see if I improved and got better. So he was like, and continue. So there was some interest, but they were ne- and then they will never let me leave. And then I wanted to go back to Blackpool to play. They were like, nah, you can't. So I was just like, I had to stay. So I just got my head down. Um, I had a good preseason, and then um, first game against Norwich, I scored, played well, scored, but I'll never get opportunity to start. But then there'll be players who would get opportunities to start who are not doing half as well I was doing. And this is when I started to learn more about football and what goes on behind the scenes. Okay, cool, it's not just talent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know, understand? So then I remember. Um, we played the behind closed doors game. I think I scored like a hat trick or something, two goals, done well. We played Stoke on the next week. One player was injured. I thought, yeah, this is my chance. Mm. No, nope, didn't start, <laughs> didn't come on the pitch. And then, um, yeah, man, that was it, bro. Like, it was, it was so weird. And then I remember the manager's agent was trying to have a meeting with me, but I have it had an agent already and I'm very respectful. If I'm with you, I'm very loyal to you. Yeah. And I always stick by you. And I'll tell him, oh, he's trying to have, I'm sorry, this is who represents me. I don't want to, do you know what I mean? Of course, you're going to honour your side yeah, of it. Yeah. And then for like six, seven weeks, bro, I wasn't in the squad. I was sitting at home. So, are you trying to, I don't know what to make of it. Bro, Basically, so know, the agency it? that you're with, basically, they were trying to, get you to the manager's agency or no what? no 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 the manager's Club. agency agent wanted to have a meeting with me because he liked me he wanted to sign me but mm. i said no i have an agent mm. so, so i don't want to sign with you i've got an agent i don't want to mm. sign with you so i know as in, sorry not sign i don't want to be disrespectful be part of the agency so leave your no, agency i don't want to be disrespectful go have a meeting with you behind my agent's yeah, back yeah, you know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. so more like, like the, the guy i've known the guy yeah. since i was a kid 18 19 yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. so i was like no and then um what happened and I think we played against um, I don't know who it was I came on I thought I'd done alright but I got subbed on and got subbed off wow yeah that's I don't know bro I got subbed on and I was growing into the game I got subbed on and got subbed and off and this was after the meeting or before no, the I never meeting, had the I didn't meeting have, I didn't even have a meeting it, but I got yeah. subbed mm-hmm. on after the situation of yeah, the yeah, 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 I still got yeah. Su- I got subbed on and I got subbed off. So do you think that was like a message? Or <laughs> I don't even think that was a message. I don't know. Innit? I just got <laughs> subbed on and got subbed off. I su- got subbed on and got subbed off like sixty fifth minute, bro. My confidence was shattered, bro. I never that never happened to me in my life. So is that the ultimate as a pro, like the ultimate <laughs> humiliation? <laughs> yeah, it's humiliating, man. Bro, it was wasn't nice. And then I just said to my dad, you know, I'm done. Then after that. I wasn't in the squad for like six, seven weeks. 
And then I was at home, bro. I was so depressed. And and then um, arts to go on loan. Arts to go on loan, and then they were like, "Okay, Paul, let me." So what happened again? So arts to go on loan. No, sorry, it was my. I remember it was January the first. Played Sheffield Wednesday away. I'm sitting in the stands. Young players on the bench, bro. I'm in the stands, bro. That yeah. I've played like a hundred games now. I'm sitting, I'm watching it, I'm sitting this, this is January the 1st. So I was like, okay, no, I need to go see the manager. I went to see him, I said, look, please, I need to go. I want to go play some games. I want to go on loan, it's January now. He goes, oh yeah, we can, let's have a talk about it. So, okay, cool. The week before, I was in the stands. And then a week later, we played West Ham in the FA Cup. I'm the first substitute to come on. That's just a... So then... It's a head fuck. <laughs> the, next, the next day, the next week... Um, I get I um I get called into the office. He goes, "Oh, there's a team that wants to sign you," and I was like, um, "Right now, I don't want to commit to anyone permanently. I'll go on loan. I will just want to play football, enjoy my football again, and then come the summer, then I'll make a decision of who I want to sign to. I don't want to commit to anything, but I will go on loan and just get get back playing again, get rhythm." And then the manager was like, "Oh, are you sure?" And I was just like, "Yeah, like." So I left the office. Within two minutes, the the lady, the receptionist was like, oh, the manager wants you back in. So I walked back in and he goes, um, like, are you sure? And I was like, yeah, like, um, if it's a loan deal, I'll take it. So then I'm running out to training, doing the passing drill, doing the warm up. Then they go, oh, Viv, you're inside. So I got sent inside. So now I'm like, right, I'm angry. Done, but then I just like, you know, let me get on with it, done the session in the gym that I needed to do. And then the next day, I trained with the youth team. So like at the time, Jude Bellingham was like 15 or 14. Yeah. I'm training with Jude when he's like 15. <laughs> Still wow. very, very good them times though. <laughs> okay, yeah. well, so you can tell that this oh, guy- no, He always he used to come up and train with us all the time when he was 15. Oh, okay. Okay. Sit, what, was he big, still like physically? Yeah, and sit, yeah, sit, <laughs> sit experienced players down on their bums. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very good. What, at 15? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So come, come up in, to the first team come, yes yes very good wow. good player man very good player so then yeah I remember I'd done that session and then I came back um, I remember I came coming so I'd done the session and I was like look like like I said prior I just said look I want to go on loan I don't want to commit to nothing so I've done the session with the under 15s and I've come sorry not the under 15s the youth team or just like, I've come back and then on Sky in the uh, in the canteen uh, Palermo wants Viv on loan everyone's looking at raw <laughs> and I'm like yeah like so it's like I would rather go on loan somewhere and just clear my head mm. and then that didn't um, make out so then I went to Portsmouth on loan instead and then I remember like um, the manager at the time saying look like I remember them him reading I think he he wrote down the contract that they offered me. I hadn't even spoken to the club. I didn't know nothing about it. It just showed me and I was like, I'm not interested. And then just getting angry. I'm going to call club, every club and say, um, you're this, you're that. Make sure no one signs you. I'm like, I've never done nothing wrong. Never been late. Don't get fined. I plan myself well. I came through the, luckily what saved me, I came through the academy at Birmingham and everybody knows me. I'm a good, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Very yeah. Respectful. So I'd be like, Viv wouldn't so do I just that. Went to the res- yeah. I went to the academy manager and then told him this what was going on and I went and had a meeting with the the chairman and they're like oh we want to keep you here and I was like listen man I'm like, I'm done I just want to go on loan and then in the summer I'll come back and see and then yeah I came back in the summer and then that's when I had offers from abroad and I left so what was your agency doing at this time because in football now we see a lot of people going with their families etc like so mm. did your agent so yeah. of age because you're a young player like all this must have been like, mad to handle yeah, we all had to have a, we had a meeting with the uh, the chairman and obviously my agent was that, that my agent at the time I spoke and was like look, this is not this is crazy like well, look what's happening why are they treating them like this and then I just remember saying look like because obviously they're not going to know because they're not there mm-hmm. so I was like look you're not before you, you not need to know what's going on because so that for future basis, this doesn't happen to no one else, but this is what's happening to me. And then um, they were like, no, we understand, don't worry, it's okay. 
and they allowed me to go alone. They could have said no, stay, but they allowed me to go alone. So yeah, what's what's next for Viv Solomon, man? Like, what's what does the future lie for you? I know um, you've gone through a lot. Yeah, but yeah like, how, yeah, it's been a deep convo, but there's it. positives yeah, as well, yeah, man. No, man. You understand? Like mad there's positives of every situation. Mm. Of course, one hundred percent. So what's next? Um, like I said, just trying to get myself to the next level. That's it. And um, improving every day, and just being a better person. Like, that's it, really, man. And. Just trying to get my switch. It will happen. I know it will happen. Hopefully, in the next six months, it will happen. So, yeah. just gotta keep applying myself properly, keep putting in the graft, and it will happen. But I'm nearly there. Yeah. Like with it, I feel very good now. I feel That's very good. good. Yeah, cause um, another experience you've been through is you know in Bulgaria. I think recently Alan Pardew sort of quit his job. Yeah, Cause yeah. like a few black players. We're getting it. Yeah, getting it. And yeah, man, it's sad because that club's a massive club, man. Got a good big history got passionate fans but it's just the sad just the 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 dark people that kind of spoil it man mm. like all that nonsense that still goes on but they have a good club good setup good people and they'll always sign people of colour black people throughout everything they'll always sign because they know that they're very diverse and everybody's equal at the end of the day it's just the, the minority that kind of spoil it but so it's not nice, man. It's not nice. Well, so did here. you have any like personal encounters with racism or? Just yeah, one time with a fan, fans, away fans. When I was warming up, I was like, first time it ever happened. It was not nice. Well, what did they say or do? Or it was like I was a target, bro. Solomon and it's doing the monkey chance. Oh god, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Literally, it was crazy, bro. Like let's say like behind you, like the big stand. I'm running up and down, mm. and it was Solomon, ooh, ooh, like all of that. But and then DMs and stuff it was crazy. What? So they even took it to the DMs after? Yeah, like. they took it to the DMs, bro. So what do you tell the club? Or? I told the club, um. and one of them was a fan because we drew that. I think there was it was one was from the away fans, and then the next week was some was from our fans because we drew a game. But I played very well that game, but we didn't win. Well, you know you're gonna, you know what I mean, you mm. scapegoat, like you're gonna get blamed for it because oh, you come from England. Do you know what I mean? You should be scoring 10 goals a game. Mm. So then one fan just DM'd me something. So I sent his page to the owner and then the owner sent it to the head. Like, we have like ultras. Oh, yeah, so yeah, he sent yeah. it to the head ultra and they found the guy. <laughs> and then the guy within like 20 minutes messaged me saying, sorry, <laughs> I have black friends. Start showing oh. me pictures of him and stuff. Oh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I was just like, I just ignored it, man. Yeah. Like, I'm not a racist, sorry. Why did you go and tell the head ultra, all of this, all of that? Wow. On Instagram, he's messaging me. That's like, mad. So it. And then, yeah, but the club got fined as well, but getting fined is not going to change. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Yeah. But I, th I think it's just part and parcel. It's like, it's crazy, but it happens everywhere, innit? Mm. Of course, of course. So, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna like obviously talk or uh, like end on a positive note, like yeah, being yeah. called up for Nigeria. Like that must have been a mad experience, you know. Yeah, man, that was that was big, man. Like it was po it was so big. I didn't expect it to be that fast, but like when it happened, man, I cherished that moment, bro. Like, um, I literally gone from being at Birmingham where I wasn't really playing and stuff, and then kind of move into a whole new culture, a whole different country. And then um, within two months, I was three months to getting picked for Nigeria. Like I put in a lot of work and so it was good, man. It was positive, it was good. And that's something that I hope to like continue to do now that I'm back and I feel like I'm able and capable to compete with the other players. But so yeah, no, I mean, it was a big positive. Mm, Cause you're around that like, play, what the Brazil squad, I think. Yeah, it was, we played it, that was against yeah, Brazil, Brazil, yeah. Yeah, yeah so you can see what Casemiro, all yeah, these players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. So all these top players. I think they had a first, they had a friendly against um, Senegal. So even to see like people like Mane and stuff like that was, was Could big. Kudabali. Kudabali mm. and that. And then when we played Brazil, it was crazy. Like, saw like Neymar and then like Casemiro came into the change. Everyone wanted to swap because they liked our. The, the jersey. Oh, yeah, yeah, the drip. Yeah, the yeah, one had that the cloud. Drip. You like the cloud. <laughs> Casemiro, Casemiro came into the change room. Okay. To swap, like, so no, it was it was big. It was to watch at that level as well, because that was that's a whole new, that's a mm. whole different yeah, level. Yeah, that's itself. the elite. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Coming from like six months ago, I was on loan at Portsmouth, 
and then leaving to go to Europe and then to be in there at that stage, I was like, yeah, no, this is where I need to be. So it was a good um, experience and it was, it was a good taster. So yeah, man, that can only motivate you really to try and get to the top. And Viv, what do you like getting up to outside of football? Just chilling with my family, really, bro. Like, I feel like I've, I've changed more. It's more going out with friends, do you know what I mean? Having fun and that. Popping like, a bottle or two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Viv. Viv was local at the club. <laughs> back back in the day, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, yeah, it's just, bro, when you go through so much stuff and like, you're to yourself, man, yeah. and like, there's only, it's like, especially when you go through like peri- dark periods and it's like, mm. who's really there? So like, what's the point of, trying to please everybody mm. when not everybody's kind of there for you. It's not, you shouldn't even expect it because life doesn't work like that. So I'm not really angry. That's just life. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So through all these experiences, I just keep myself, me and my, my family, man, and just close friends. That's it. Obviously, I still like to socialise a little bit, but not as much as I would before. I'm, pro- I'm more closed in now. Yeah, so in terms of like growing up on the ends, we're from a similar part. Yeah, yeah, I grew yeah. up in Bermondsey, went to school in Peckham. Yeah. I know you're from what, Mitcham? I grew up in Strattonville. Yeah. I went to school in Stratham. Yeah. Yeah, man, so. Yeah, so it's not too far away. So like, how is it, how is it growing up on the growing ends? Up in the yeah, because we um, all grew up. Man. Growing up in the ends, man, it's like, this, it's like 50-50. It? It's like, yeah. you can go that way, you can go that way. But then at the same time, the people who do go that way, when they know you've got talent, I'm like, no, stay, do you know what I mean? No, you can't come with us. Do you know what I mean? And everyone, my mum and dad were disciplined. Like, everyone was scared of my mum on my uh. estate. Because my mum wasn't, my mum don't play. Like, my mum mm. used to chase me around the estate with the slipper and that. So from when everyone's seeing that, <laughs> they don't want to link Auntie <laughs> Solomon and all, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, so yeah, man, I was, I, I was, was raised well, man. Mm. Like, obviously, I didn't, and I wasn't the one to really get in trouble like that. Obviously, I have friends who, do you know what I mean, mm. took that side, but I didn't. I wanted to obviously play football and go this way. So, yeah, no, don't get me wrong. We all have our moments. Mm. We will have our, that period where we get in a bit of trouble and stuff like that. But I think it happens to everyone when you're young. Yeah, but, yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, I was, I was, always, I was good, man. I was calm. Come from a good family and, yeah, man. And I... People who were older than me wouldn't even let me take that route anyway because they knew what talent I had. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So, like, so, yeah. so do you still like, I don't know, go back to the ends or yeah. have friends in the ends that you link up? Like, All the oh, time, man. Yeah. I've never, I've never been that footballer who becomes a footballer and then forget leaves, yeah. forget yeah. my yeah. friends. I go to the, I go still go back to my old area. I, I go to my auntie's house. I sit down. I'll, I'll eat in my auntie's house. Go see my friends and stuff like that when I have the time. It's important, man. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, one, f- with everything that you're able to acquire when you do well, you still got to remember where you come from. Of course, so and I'm give always, back. Do you know what I mean? Man. 100%. So I always, where I grew up, I always go back when I have the time. But at the same time, you have to obviously be wary because not everybody's happy. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So, what do they call it? Red yeah, eye or yeah, evil yeah, eye? Yeah, and so yeah. like, you got to be careful who you kind of interact with. But other than that, everyone that I grew up with, solid, man. They're good people, man. Cool one. Viv, last one from me. We've got um, a new closing tradition on this podcast and I think we need to change it up a little bit because, you know, we've had some <laughs> comments from people saying, oh, what's going on? You haven't promised to get us blah and this yeah, person yeah, and yeah. that person. So the last question is, if you had to help us, so not recommend, help us get a potential guest in football onto this platform, who do you think is the perfect fit that you will help us with? Um... Joe Rebo. I'm chatting to Joe already. <laughs> <laughs> I can cool. get him, man. I'll call yeah, him after. Cool, cool. Mm. Yeah, Joe. I can call Joe. Call Alex. I will okay. be. I'll, I'll call. And then let's see, man. Pick up from there. They're good guys, so yeah. they'll be willing to. It's just about t- having the time. 100. Do you know what I mean? Of like, course. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're ready to travel just to put it out there to our <laughs> listeners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, because some people think, why aren't you putting out more regular content? We're ready to travel. It's just yeah, about yeah, yeah. availability. Yeah, it's difficult. It. It's yeah, tough. No, it's tough. No, it's been a pleasure, Viv. Thanks for being open. We appreciate you taking the time out to come in and Mm -hmm. say flat back. And I just want you to have a fantastic season. Thank you, man. Thank you very much for having me. 
It's been a long one coming, but now we got there in the end. That's, That's it. Good, We've man. been it's chatting for a while. Yeah, We're going to still keep yeah, talking we'll keep, as well, man, because you're proper. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much for having me, man. It's good, man. And congratulations to Love. you your platform. Love, Love my brother. Man. Love, Love bro. Thank you. Yeah, so we're going to leave it there. That's another episode of the Beautiful Game podcast. Over and out. Peace.